tall, awkward, and with a long reach. Here's the tail of the tape. They are both 31, and Laos with a height and reach advantage. Laos just a quarter of a pound heavier. Their records are almost identical. Look at that average per fight, almost the same. Slightly higher knockout percentage for Littles. But their records do bear an uncanny resemblance. Lyles has won 28 and lost one. Littles has won 27 and lost one. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. And we welcome you to the Newcastle Arena here in beautiful and friendly Newcastle, England. As at this time, we present the first of our world title featured attractions brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network, along with Don King Productions, as sponsored by MBC and Adidas. This map coming your way is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. The president is Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor at ringside, Dr. Calvin Inelse. This is along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the stewards in charge, Nipper Reed and Bob Graham. Introducing to you the judges scoring this bout from ringside, Dwayne Ford, Luis Rivera, and Osvaldo Sanchez. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this, his 30th world title bout, Mitch Halpern. All right, fans, here we go with the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right and fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing aqua trunks with black trim, fighting out of it representing Flint, Michigan in the United States. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 pounds, or 167 US pounds. His record includes 27 wins, only one defeat, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBA number one ranked super middleweight in the world. Please welcome the fighter known as the doctor of style, Tim. Across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corners, the defending world champion, wearing white trunks with blue trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Detroit, Michigan, in the United States. His weight, 11 stone, 13 and 1 quarter pounds, or 167 and 1 quarter U.S. pounds. His record includes 28 wins, only one loss, one no contest, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the fourth defense of his title. Please welcome the defending WBA Super Middleweight Champion of the World, introducing the yeah. fabulous yeah. Ricky yeah. Lyle. Yes. Once again, a referee in charge, Mitch Halpern, American referee for this fight. Short and sweet, these two know each other very well. They used to room together on American amateur trips. Good friends, but not tonight for the next 12 rounds fought three times as amateurs and Lyles won all three of those one of them there was a disqualification that's the WBA belt that's on the line here tonight these two particularly Lyles have often been mentioned as possible opponents for the likes of Ben and Eubank it's never quite happened Lyles fabulous Frankie Lyles as he calls himself the defending champion tall and gangly with the white trunks the green of Tim Littles who fought this side of the water quite recently in Cork when he beat Chris Sandy, the former Olympic medalist. One of three wins he's had since his world title defeat against James Tony. And already you're seeing what makes Lyles a very tough man to beat. He's very tall, quick reflexes, and he's a southpaw. But they know each other so well, it's obviously difficult for both fighters because they, they obviously they're aware of what each one's going to do. 
good right hand from Lyles, who does throw punches sometimes from rather unusual ang angles. Good right hand again. No knockdown there, just wrestled round, really, Littles. There's a feeling that Lyles may well have improved since Littles beat him before in a fight for the United States Boxing Association title. That's right, and also Littles had that bad defeat against James Tony, which you would think has maybe just dented his confidence a little. I think Ring Magazine once called Littles the best kept secret in American boxing. This is a chance for him to really establish himself. Tim Littles may be a last chance. But Lyles is a very, very difficult man to get to, and he's got fast hands, good right hand there, and again, Littles is in trouble. Round. That wasn't really in the script. Was Everyone that, was predicting a 12 rounder here. They were, and it was that quick, that quick right hand from Lyles. You see, very confident. He caught him just coming in, doubled up the power of the punch. Three or four more, thud home, and Lyles an explosive form in the first round. And Littles goes back to the wrong corner. That's how disorientated he is. Yes, he was in a, a lot of trouble there. It was a very fast punch. It's obviously, it's caught him cold a little bit, but he was hurt from that. You see the lead which he gets that It's almost a hook, a hook come over, cut. really gets a lot of power. And then he just carries on with the right hand. And we've got a controversy going on while we watch that, because the Lyles corner are claiming that that was only a two-minute round and that the timekeeper got it wrong. If so, we can confirm that, and that could be absolutely vital, because Lyles was robbed of an extra minute in which to finish the job. Well, that would be a, a big error from the timekeeper, and that has maybe cost Lyles dearly, because he could have gotten the stoppage there. Lyles was certainly in a, a lot of problems. Well, the Lyles cornermen are absolutely furious about that. That is a big mistake. Make no mistake. Second round, can Lyles in the white trunks, the defending champion in his fourth defence, repeat the dose against his old mate? Again, the legs just looked unsteady there as Lyles landed that left hand. And this time, he's caught with a right hand, Lyles himself. Just caught off balance and wrestled down, he goes down. Body shot, it looked like, but it's not going to be counted. Littles complains that he got in with a the shot there. But Littles has a cut as well, he's picked a cut above his left eye. So lots of drama in this fight so early. It really is, and we'd like to look at that again, really, if we can. That uh, alleged slip by Lyles, because Littles thought he caught him, and now he's cut by the left eye, Littles everything happening in this fight in the opening couple of rounds we've had a two-minute round we've had littles on the floor we've had him going back to the wrong corner now we have him cut we also had lyle staggered by a right hand and maybe down from a body punch which wasn't counted and we haven't been going for much more than four minutes in this fight so far and the feeling was that this would be a something of a, of a, a boring type fight because they knew each other so well and so much drama you can forget that. <laughs> Punching after it, the referee had said, great Mitch Halpin is having his work cut out there in the moment. If this is how these two go on when they're friends, you'd hate <laughs> to see them with their enemies, wouldn't you? I was going to say, these two are supposed to be friends. But this is the, the boxing ring, the world championship at stake, and it's all business. Left hook was a good shot from Littles. He's really come out for this second round, determined to try and establish himself after a torrid opening round. Right uppercut was a good shot from Lyles. Littles on the counter with the left hook. Lyles right, getting good leverage with that right. It's almost an uppercut hook that he throws. Good headshots again from Littles. He's come back very, very well. A right hand to the head. It's caught around the ear, and I think that... Was it a rabbit punch? He's okay. Mitch Huffman had scored great. Nichols 
hit Lyles after that break and is now having a point deducted. So the drama goes on here. One point off for Littles, which will undo the good work he's done in this round. He will feel fairly aggrieved. I think he felt he had Lyles down genuinely earlier in the round and it wasn't counted. Now he's had a point deducted. And he's got a cut left eye as well. But certainly this is Alston Littles into action. He's, he's very motivated now. A little bit too much because he's, he's pushing forward and he's making mistakes. Mistakes are so high, right hand, and another one, and Littles is down again. Oh, and he doesn't know where he is, he was up much too quickly. He'll have to take a mandatory eight, but he really could have done himself a favour by staying down. Well, that was an extraordinary round. Extraordinary stuff. Back to what is proving an incident-packed fight for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship on this Prince Nassim Mohamed show. He comes up later on. Littles has been down in both rounds so far. He's been cut. He was denied a possible knockdown, we felt, in round two. And Littles has already had a point deducted as well. Littles in the green trunks, the challenger, in trouble in the fight. Yes, he's looking very unsteady on his legs when Lyles is connected. He's got him with a wreck. And Lyles almost falls down onto our TV monitors at ringside. That's the answer from Tim Littles. Well, unending drama. Officially had 20 seconds to get back in the ring. Littles wants to finish the job here. He wrestles, wrestles Lyles to the floor. He's already had one point deducted. Well, this is an amazing fight so far, Glenn. It really is. Everything's happening here. Just from one way to the other, both landing with good shots. And they said this would be cautious, dull, negative. Well, on paper, the way both fighters fight, it looked as if it would be that way, but certainly it's, it's a big change from that. And again, now Littles has got to watch it. He's had one point deducted, this time for punching again after the break. He claimed he was being held by Lyles. He's pulled on to the punches. He's very, very keyed up, and I think at times that's where he's, he's running into mistakes. He's lunging forward, he's trying to wrestle his arms free and try to hit on the break. Littles really fired up. And gets him with a big left hand, that's shaking Lyles up again, desperately trying to hold on. But they both have the power to really hurt the other fighter here. Well, Littles really firing them big hooks there. Getting lots of momentum behind them, trying to roll into the punches. Another right hand was a good shot from Tim Littles. Lyles is beginning to give out distress signals. I'm not quite sure why he sank to the canvas there. It's certainly not a knockdown. Littles is beginning to get to him in this third round. And on the scorecards, we reckon Littles would have gone into the round five points behind, having been on the floor twice and having had a point deducted. That's right, Lyle's very much on the defensive here, and he's not having it very well at all. Littles just rolling forward and then coming up with the big hooks. Sometimes can be an advantage to the smaller fighter to punch up like that with the right hand having success with that right hand. He just needs to bring the left hook behind that punch and you're sure he'll connect. Lyles has to punch down on Littles, who's not a small man himself. But Frankie Lyles, the gangling six feet three inches. Oh, right hand was a cracking punch from Lyles. Short punch and Littles may not get up from that one. Hardly knows where he is. He's all over the place. He's got to be stopped, and it is in the third round. What an incredible fight that was. Frankie Lyles is still the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. He had Littles down in every round. He was on the floor himself and almost knocked out of the ring, but he found the answer with that right hand. Well, you will not see many better world championship fights than that no matter how long you watch boxing.
What an amazing fight. He just found the punch. It didn't look as if he could do it. He looked under pressure. Little just seemed to find the answer. And then Lyles pulled that one out. But that was the story of the fight as it lasted. Just one thing, then the other. Extraordinary fight. The final punch was sheer quality. Watch this from Frankie Lyles. Just gets the reflexes. Just a short little right hook. Gets all the power behind it. He went down very heavily. You see, just leans to the right, gets a little bit of momentum, catches him just as he comes up, doubles up the power on that punch, and he went down very heavy. And he's still in the corner, he's, he's on his feet, sitting down now, but he's in a little bit of distress there. He was never, ever going to get out from that. Never, he just stumbled into the ropes, and the referee had to stop it there. It was, in fact, well, he did get out, let's be fair, he got up, That's right, but his legs just fell forward were into playing the a corner. different tune, weren't they? And Frankie Lyles, who had many, many alarming moments in that fight, Strange thing to say when he had his opponent down in every round, but it looked like Littles could have taken him out as well. And he avenges his earlier defeat by Tim Littles. That's uh, Jackie O'Halloran, the manager of Lyles. It was the lady who went across and gave him the big hug. There she is. She was taking some kind of tourist snaps in the corner earlier on. Lyles, who beat Roy Jones as an amateur. Roy Jones regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, then lost to him in the 88 Olympic trials. So he's got some, uh, he's got a really good record. And with that fight being shown in America, he may well shake off his reputation of being a dull, boring fighter. Dull and boring were the last two adjectives in the world you would use to describe what we've just seen here at the Newcastle Arena. And Prince